Hello and welcome to The Gaggle, where we challenge and, if necessary, destroy media narratives. I'm George Samuel. Here with me today, of course, is co-founder of The Gaggle, Peter Lavelle, host also of RT's talk show, Crosstalk. Well, Peter, yesterday, uh, President Biden went to Philadelphia and gave uh, probably one of the worst speeches uh, any president has given in uh, many a long year. Uh, the thrust of his speech, something we've already heard many times before, the Democrats repeated ad nauseum every day, um, that the Republicans are desperately trying to crush voting rights. Uh, they're all driven by uh, racist animus and, uh, and that therefore the, the Republic is in, in danger. Uh, and so they have desperately have to you know, pass his um, uh, the, Jim the, Crow, Jim yeah, Crow. That's right, this, yeah, that's right, Jim Crow. You know, but you know this. You know this legislature must be passed immediately because you know millions of people will be disenfranchised. You know, quite how you know having showing ID or uh, you know wait, waiting an hour uh, to vote uh, is disenfranchising anyone. You know, it doesn't it doesn't matter. Uh, he didn't go. He didn't go into um, what he did last time about this horror. Of have people having no water, that they're standing online without water. Give these people water, right? But he did talk about the the horror of partisan poll watchers, and that there has to be the partisan poll watchers would actually have to stand in a, be in a position that they can actually see. You know, in other words, a partisan poll watcher standing a hundred feet away, <laughs> not doing anything because. Most people can't see what's going on a hundred feet away. <laughs> but, but, so that, but that is terrible. The partisan poll watchers intimidating the vote counters. It's tantamount to the civil war. <laughs> and a, a measure of his incendiary uh, comments is just, I'll uh, just read a little bit out of it. He says, it gives me no pleasure to say this. I never thought in my entire career I'd ever have to say it, but I swore an oath to you to God to preserve, protect and defend the constitution. And that's an oath that forms a sacred trust to defend America against all threats, both foreign and domestic. The assault on free and fair elections is just such a threat. I've said it before, we are facing the most significant test of our democracy since the Civil War. That's no hyperbole. Since the Civil War, the Confederates back then uh, never breached the Capitol as insurrectionists did on January the 6th. I'm not saying this to alarm you. I'm saying this because you should be alarmed. Um, and, yeah, and, well, the Confederates were Democrats. Yes, okay? but and you, you should also remember he didn't leave out Putin from the speech. Putin made an appearance because he did talk about that elections are under threat from foreign actors, and he said, "And I talked to President Putin when I talked when I met him in Geneva about this. In other words, I warned him: no more interfering in our elections." And of course, then he says here you know, in anticipation of 2022, which is basically they're expecting to lose in 2022. And we will be, of course, going full throttle that we was robbed and that this was entirely because of this Republican stolen election in alliance with Putin. So as I say, worst speech uh, any president has delivered. And start those mail-in ballots today. Exactly. Okay, get voting and now. Well, you know, first of all, it was a really dangerous speech to give. And, and he said, this is not hyperbole. It's worse than hyperbole. It's incendiary. Um, what I would say to Joe Biden is then, how did Barack Obama slip through the net and get elected twice? Oh, and Bill Clinton, too. Yeah. yeah. How, how did that happen? Right. right. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Number two, the Democrats, if you look at the voting results from last November, they should be in extreme panic mode. First of all, they didn't um, uh, win any new, they lost seats, they didn't win any new uh, seats in the, in the House. There was no blue wave. And if you look at the, the voting data, it's not that Republicans are trying to suppress the vote. No, is what they're terrified of is that they're losing their coalition. They're losing Hispanics, they're losing black men. And um, uh, they, their, their coalition is unsustainable if that trend continues. Right. And so what they do is they look at these monolithic blocks, actually in a very racist way. You know, uh, every black person is the same. Every Hispanic is the same. I, 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 I know far more about the Hispanic community because I came from Southern California. Let me just tell everyone, it's pretty diverse, okay? <laughs> very diverse. 
Um, so what the, the, the what, what they claim is you know protecting voter integrity. What they want is they want people they want to be, uh, um, uh, uh, allow cheating and they want to allow well, much it. more of it, that's much it. much more of it. Okay, that's, that's and it. you know you know and then the vice president you know. Um, Kamala Harris, I think Kinko's is gone, okay? I think it's been gone a long time. For those that don't know, that was a, co a place where you could get, get uh, Xerox copies, okay? Um, and it was very popular with university students because we couldn't afford the books that we were told to read. So we, well, we copied the books and then, you know, we returned it to the bookstore. But um, uh, in this voter ID, th they, again, that speech is so out of whack with what public opinion is. I mean, we're looking at 70, 80%. I mean, that's overwhelming of people wanting to have voter ID. It worked for Barack Obama. Well, that's so it. And, that, and, that, and, yeah, and exactly. And it, 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 you know, it's very hard to justify not having a uh, voter ID when um, you pretty much can't enter any building uh, in America without having a photo ID. Um, you, you can't get on a plane, definitely, without photo ID. And if the uh, Biden administration will have its way, you pretty much won't be able to get in anywhere without having a, a vaccine ID. So the one thing, the one domain where we're apparently not going to have any ID, any restrictions whatsoever, is voting, which Biden shows us is the most sacred thing uh, on the face of the earth. Well, of course, the, you know, you have to have uh, you have to protect the integrity of an election. I mean, there is a reason why we don't phone in our vote. That would be even easier. Why don't, why don't we just phone in, pick up a phone and, and, and vote? Or, you know, or just do it on the internet. Just, you know. Or, or, or pick up somebody else's phone and vote. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that, that's what I mean. That may, let's make, I mean, if the issue is, well, let's make it as easy as possible, then fine. Well, I think we should make it as easy. You know, give me your phone. I'll, 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 I'll phone in my vote. I mean, the whole point is, that you want to be make sure that there isn't cheating. And American history is replete with extensive election cheating because, of course, cheating is actually very easy uh, if you don't have proper security in place. I mean, after all, you know, you'd be able to help yourself to other people's bank accounts if there weren't proper security in place uh, to make sure that you are the person saying it. Otherwise, you know, I'd go in, help myself to your bank account. I mean, uh, but there has to be some measure in this. And so, but no, 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 nothing in place at all. I think uh, Biden's speechwriter inadvertently um, made mention of something that really made my ears perk up, and I'm sure yours too, when he was saying, you know, it matters who counts the votes. Well, right. there, you know, we do, there's a bit, Stalin was very famous in saying, That's right. That's right. Yeah. you know, is it, you know, it, it, um, it, it, what matters most is who counts the votes, okay? Right. And that, and I don't think that speechwriter is probably a twenty-something, thirty-something right. doesn't know right. any history. But you know, when he said that, that made me put me very much at uh, unease. Right. Is that right. yeah? I, you, you want the DNC to be the the pinnacle, the right. the, 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 the 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 center of of uh, all things related to the election. That's not what I want. Okay. No, and no, no. I, I don't think it's very good. When, you know, when we have situations as we had um, in the uh, November election. When suddenly, for no reason, a number of states suddenly said, "Well, we're, we're not. We're going to stop counting, just like that. We're going to stop counting." And then, <laughs> once all the poll observers have gone, uh, they haul out suitcases of votes. I don't think that's a very desirable state of affairs. You, you kind of there are questions raised about the integrity of the vote counters when that happens. But the biggest mistake. In, in reference to the election, and you and I are in, in lockstep on this one, is that instead of calling it the big lie, the big lie, maybe it is, okay? But, you know, there are resources, there are people, and there are interested parties, you know, they had between November and January to right. say, okay, this is so important. Joe Biden thinks it's so important. Mm -hmm. Let's go through these claims here instead of saying, nope, we're not going to even consider it, okay? And that was the biggest, maybe the outcome would have been the same, George, maybe, I don't know. But because they didn't do a forensic um, autopsy, we will never know. And there are many, many people, and I mean, in Republican Party and, a lot, and conservatives, it's, it's a majoritarian position. Something went wrong with that election, okay? Now there's a lot of different degrees of what that means, something that went wrong, and we don't need to go into it here. But just because that's because that sentiment exists, is that we missed an opportunity to to uh, get past that, and and because 
They don't want to have forensic study of it. It's going to haunt the Republic for a very long time. Right. And I think when you look at the hysteria that is now greeting the uh, forensic audit that is taking place in Arizona, you know, you know media just you know, pulling their hair out. Um, when you, you think, why should anyone be afraid of an audit? It happens yeah. in the business world all the time. There's an audit, you know, that's it. You know, let's, let's go through it. You know, every, every philanthropic organization has to undergo an audit to make sure that people aren't pocketing and helping themselves to uh, funds that they're not supposed to get. An audit is part um, parcel of, you know, the business world. You know, the IRS does audits all the time. So the whole idea that, oh my God, you're putting an audit, that, you know, you are threatening democracy. How are you threatening democracy? You should be able to have an audit, make sure that these votes will be reinforced. It'd be reinforcing people's belief in it right. because if you go, George, if you go across the board, what institutions do people have uh, faith in anymore? It's pretty thin. It's pretty thin. Oh, about auditing this, is, except for the Pentagon, you, you, you just can't somehow audit it. <laughs> I think I think the lawmakers are so terrified to realize how many trillions of dollars have been lost. They don't want to know. No. They, ignorance is bliss. We, we don't want to know. <laughs> right, right. Well, again, well, like, uh, you know, as often happens when you when you throw huge amounts of money, people are going to be pocketing large chunks of it, and no one knows where it. exactly. <laughs> Except that, you know, at the same time, we have Trump's uh, uh, CFO doing a perp walk uh, for free parking. And, um, uh, a a, a perp walk because, uh, you know, he uh, di didn't, didn't pay his taxes on the uh, school fees uh, that the, the company has assigned him. Absolute uh, nonsense. A fine. A fine is, the, exactly. is always the remedy, right. except this time. Because except this All right, time. everybody, we're on the gaggle, so please go. Uh, I'm sorry, we're on local, so type in the gaggle.locals.com. Uh, George and I are doing one on one uh, Zoom uh, chats with gagglers. It's turning into a really fun exercise. We encourage you to do it. The gaggle store with all kinds of uh, gifts that are, will be on display. We're doing the final, final, final stuff. We should have it up in a few days. I think a, a lot of uh, nice, smart gifts. What best way to start with the morning is that they, it would be a exactly. gaggle mug. A beautiful okay. mug, and then you have a different mug for your, your, your drink with lunch. And then when you're getting helping yourself to the brandy <laughs> late at night, you get another mug for that. So, And then um, um, uh, also um, uh, we do have a tip jar, and we, we, we like seeing it overflow. Aesthetically, it's very beautiful. And, and Buddy, he's a big proponent of it. You know, I'm not going it's very hot. It's 90 degrees Fahrenheit here, so Buddy's sleeping. Right, right, yeah. So, and any help that you can offer uh, would be most appreciated. Uh, you know, the, the, the more help we get, the better our product. Uh, and remember, if you like the gaggle, please like, share, and subscribe. See you soon. Bye.